They have built a house of cards here in Maricopa County. I think they're all wondering what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what, I'm not just going to knock that house of cards over. We're going to burn it to the ground. It's important that you invoke the imagery of January 6th as much as possible as an election denier. But anyway, that, that look, that's Carrie Lake and she is fired up. She's clearly confident despite not being governor. I love pointing that out. So clearly something must be going on and it wasn't hard to figure out what it was. She tweeted out huge AZ Supreme Court rules in favor of Carrie Lake using the third person. I guess everyone on the right does that now. Forces lower court to look at signature verification issues. Oh no, after months of legal defeat after legal defeat. Oh my God, the tide is turning. They're going for Carrie Lake unless you consider the context of what actually happened because yes, Something like what she tweeted did happen, but it was one of many things that happened in her most recent legal, um, uh, but like the claims that she put forward. She had made seven legal claims. They were all adjudicated. Six of them were dismissed properly, according to the judge, by lower court. So she lost six out of seven of the claims. Weird that she didn't find room to fit that in her tweet. That doesn't look like 180 characters to me. But anyway, um, those claims that were struck down include uh, that tens of thousands of ballots were injected into the election. She called that an undisputed fact in her lawsuit. They found a way to dispute it, as well as alleging that problems with tabulation machines disenfranchised thousands of voters. That also was found again to not be true. The one that she won on was her sixth legal claim, which has to do with Lake's allegation that Maricopa County did not follow signature verification procedures. Uh, that must now receive a second look by a county judge. The county and appeals court interpreted Lake's signature related challenge as applying to the policies themselves, not how the policies were actually applied in the 2022 election. And they dismissed her claim based on grounds that she filed their legal challenge too late. But that was an error according to the AZ Supreme Court noting, quote, Lake could not have brought this challenge before the election. Importantly, and I say this both to the audience and also to Carrie Lake, who I know is a big fan. The Supreme Court did not evaluate whether her signature claim had any actual merit. Just that the way that it had been adjudicated in the prior court was not true. And it also uh, quoted the appeals court ruling saying that to prove her claim, Lake must provide quote, a competent mathematical basis to conclude that the outcome would plausibly have been different, not simply an untethered assertion of uncertainty, which is clearly what she's working with right now. So this is a brief spot of sunshine legally for Carrie Lake amidst a whole lot of defeat. And even this is unlikely to go anywhere. Jessica, what do you think? It's fascinating, especially when you consider what election turnout looks like for elections in the United States lately. Uh, 54%, 60% at a really high turnout election. For, for states where we're not voting for a president, it can be lower than that. So for Carrie Lake to be fighting this signature thing, the ballots in which signatures need to be compared are overwhelmingly the mail-in and absentee ballots, which we know lean Democrats. So there's a reason she's focusing on those is because it's not, hey, I got more votes than they counted, or there were votes of mine that didn't get counted. It's we need to take away some of theirs, which is always the Republican agenda when it comes to voting rights. This is why they don't wanna make voting easier for people because they know that they are unpopular as candidates. And Carrie Lake yeah. is unfortunately a sore loser. Yeah, uh, about the sorest loser, um, and sh and she's still going on with it. Like, and and that's fine. That's her right or whatever. But what should happen if there was balance in the force? If nature was healed, she would make these absurd claims, which is her right, and then everyone would point and laugh at her. That's how this should actually work. But unfortunately, while many people are laughing at her, I do it at least once a day. Not everyone is, and so. If you go to that tweet of hers that I showed you, there are tons of people who are like, yeah, you're my governor, you're gonna win. No, she's very much not. She is never gonna occupy the governor's mansion, at least not until another intervening election. She might become Trump's VP or whatever. And so she'll be able to take her experience of claiming to have won and apply it to claiming to have won with Trump when they lose in 2024. It's just, it's. 
I hate to see so many people encouraging this sort of stuff, Jessica. Yeah, but she's such a good storyteller, John. She gets on that mic and, and she, it's like she's telling a, a children's story. The next line, she doesn't even know what's coming out of her mouth, but it's a, a horror story. Nonetheless, we're talking about dark forces conspiring against us. It's very captivating. Yeah, it's probably the sort of stories that I'll someday hopefully tell my kids. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.